Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and I'm running as the candidate for the Popper Party of Ontario in the Thornhill by-election. Now, I want to thank Rogers Cable and Bill Hogg for inviting me on their show to do a 15-minute interview. That's rarely that I've been treated this nicely, and I really appreciate it. But, bad fortune, I couldn't make it, so I'm sending this video, which I hope answers most of the questions that Bill would have asked me. Okay, I want to bring to your attention a flyer, a newspaper article from almost 20 years ago where North York Hydro issued $25 gift certificates that people could use to buy hydro and give as gifts to their friends. What a great currency. Why they didn't think of paying their employees with them? They didn't have enough money. The employees, I think, would have taken them. How many people in Ontario wouldn't have taken the $25 Ontario Hydro piece of paper, right? That's interesting because in the 1980s, six Argentine provinces solved their underfunding problem in an interesting way. And then again in 2001, when you heard Argentina banks crashed and went broke, what happened? By 2006, all their foreign debt had been paid off. What went on? Well, the unions in both cases told the government, you're not going to lay us off because you got no money. What we're going to do is we're going to take small denomination bonds if we can use it for hydro, taxes, medical, and licenses. And that way everybody will take it just like money. And you don't have to pay interest to get it off the banks. And that's what happened. Six Argentine provinces in the 80s started paying all their employees with provincial bond currency and it popped the country out of depression. What's interesting is they used to have a thousand percent inflation rate and the central bank was worrying, oh no, all these new provincial currencies, inflation will be worse and it got better because inflation can either be more money, more chips chasing the collateral or it can be the same chips chasing less collateral after foreclosure. I call that shift B inflation. Economics doesn't teach about inflation caused by foreclosure. They only presume it's too much money all the time. So Argentina ended up by pumping all this local currency into circulation and reducing foreclosures and reducing inflation. So in 2001, well, of course, they went back to the regular banking system once they were on their feet. And by 2001, they were broke again. And they had to go back to using the provincial bond currencies once again, and they worked fine. I'd also like to point out in 1990s when Russia crashed, 750 states and municipalities had set up their own bond systems to pay their government employees. 750 only made one newspaper report and something like 25,000 corporations. So there were Pepsi bucks, McDonald's bucks, Canadian Tire money. See what I'm saying? Everybody was issuing their own bucks because they had the products to back it up. And it worked because everybody just took this valid alternate currency. So there is a way for government to provide full employment, doing incredibly lots of useful things. And the most important thing I want to focus on is on decommissioning nuclear. All right. Now, you've heard about Fukushima. When it first blew in 2011 in March and the radioactive stream was about to hit the West Coast, I did videos, duck and cover. And, of course, that's at the time when Health Canada turned off all their fallout detectors. Didn't want to scare you. And baby deaths tripled in B.C. I did the math, saw the stats. Imagine, tripled. But... They didn't scare anybody. Everybody kept going to work. Well, we've been bombarded, fooked by Fukushima for the last two and a half years. There are videos out there about measuring the radioactivity in rainfall in Ottawa and Toronto. Go see it. You deserve to be scared. So I have some videos about what I'm doing to help myself personally, but that's not the point. We need to exert maximum industrial manpower on cleaning up nuclear and decommissioning worse. And we got nuclear in Canada too. I mean, there's no need for such a dirty, dangerous energy source when there are so many new clean ones coming up, is there? So, the only thing that's stopping Fukushima from being buried is TEPCO doesn't have enough money. And maybe not even the Japanese government. And they're doing it as cheaply as they possibly can, as usual, with all other nuclear facilities around the planet. Now. 
People don't appreciate the true danger of Fukushima. They just figure, okay, if Fukushima goes, then all the Japanese are gone. Big deal. We're still far away, right? Yeah, but the point is, what happens to the other couple of dozen nuclear fuel dumps in Japan when there's no more humans to man the cooling systems? The next one's going to go. And then the next one. And then the next one. In a cascade of nuclear explosions as the they wipe out the next bunch of people and then their reactors and fuel dumps blow up. It's not really the reactors that are dangerous, it's the fuel dumps. And people think in terms of bombs and stuff. Bombs were pounds. These are tons of radioactive waste. The worst is Hanford in the United States. Right now, with like 200,000 tons of waste, okay, and in 180 tanks that are 3% of them leaking. So, and that's the absolute worst because there they produce nuclear weapons. And they only needed radioactive plutonium. And all the other 98% of the radioactive stuff they produced, they just dumped there. Well, this is the biggest dump of radioactive waste on the planet. And when their cooling systems stop, well, we're really gone. So we have massive, massive problems decommissioning and fixing nuclear and burying it, okay, and trying to save ourselves from it. And the only way we're ever going to do that is by maximizing paychecks for industrial power. And the only way that's ever going to be done is by paying those nuclear workers, everybody willing to take a week shift in Japan, high wages in bonds that the whole world's governments accept time value bonds, okay? Some people make, like, you know, a whole bunch of women organizing a database what nights they're free to babysit. And then they pay each other with one-hour bills. And then the doctor or the mechanic says, well, I'll take three hours per hour to fix the car. And the doctor says, I'll take six hours per hour to do this. And the dentist says, I'll take five hours per hour to fix your teeth. But the base is a volunteer hour, a child hour, an unskilled hour, a babysitting hour. But well, you might be able to get more if you're a good babysitter, of course. So the point is, the base is simple, and we'd just be able to pay these guys an awful lot because they're doing such dangerous work, and right now there's no money. Imagine we got the men, materials, and the tools to bury it, and we got no money to pay them. Think about that. No money, no chips, no tokens. We could fix it, but we don't have the chips. What's going on? Anyway, the Argentine solution is the easiest way for it to be done with government simply starting to pay all government, new government employees. You want to clean up that park? You got a job. No one else is going to do it, right? Wham! So at the hours you put in, the credits you get, and you can trade your hour money around. It's sort of like a PayPal. And imagine when I run in federal politics, I talk about the Bank of Canada because that's a cinch. They got a right to change money, run money. Ontario province would have some fights maybe if they ran their own Ontario bank and issued their own provincial bonds, but I don't think so. Other provinces have done it, so why couldn't they? But imagine the Bank of Canada started a PayPal where you could borrow Bank of Canada money instead of having to go to the middlemen, Royal, TD, you know what I mean, uh, Nova Scotia. Middlemen got loan sharks. And then you could borrow enough on that account and you collateral isn't your house or your charge x it's your labor 100 hours of labor thousand hours of labor that's what you're going to end up paying it off with and now you cut checks to settle all your mortgages and all your interest bearing debts student loans everything and get one big number you owe but it doesn't grow anymore and it's owed to the government for new government money and that means that after that all payments go against the principal and eventually you get out of debt because it's only the interest that will keep you in debt forever. But once you've accessed the Bank of Canada's money creation process, interest-free, well, now you've cut that amount out of your bills. So that is what can be done in the realm of computer financial reform. It can be done like a big PayPal at the Bank of Canada. It can be done like a big Let's local employment trading system. That's the women trading their hours in a time bank run by the government of Ontario. You know, and paying their employees with provincial bonds at all level of governments. If 750 municipal and provincial guys could do it in Russia, why can't we? I can't imagine why the bonds from small, some small county over there, based on an hour of labor, aren't worth pretty well the same over here, right? So, there's no excuse for not being able to do things, not being able to 
pay off Hydro's debts with Ontario bonds. Just pay off the damn debt with these bonds and say, come on back and get power for the next 20 years. That's what this money is worth. So that in a nutshell is what I'm hoping that we'll be able to do. And uh, so, and finally, I'm talking about abolishing the prohibition of marijuana because we're going to need an awful lot of cannabis oil to help us fight off the cancers from Fukushima. So you go do your homework about marijuana oil and its therapeutic benefits. And the only way we can do that provincially, because we can't actually change the uh, criminal code, that's federal, is to cut funding to the prosecution, to the police services that chase people. And if we're not going to fund anybody to chase people, how much chasing you think is going to get done? But I was the guy at the time that I was screaming, duck and cover, we're getting fooked. I was also saying we have to legalize and mass produce marijuana, cannabis oil, to treat the cancers that are coming. Okay, now, final point. I have some videos about a 126-day fast I did in order to prove that it's doable and that the purposes behind it are to prepare people for eventually when you might be stuck behind closed doors for four months and you have to survive that kind of long and how I pulled that off. So anyway, there are great dangers out there. All we can do is our very best and we can never do our very best until we've got everybody working with a paycheck and that can only be done by governments taking control of a new kind of money based on the stuff they offer us. Hey, hydro, taxes, medical, licenses, that's, who isn't going to take those chips, right? So I hope that with the explanation of how the Bank of Canada, PayPal, Time Bank would work, and how governments could make use of the same solution used by Russia during their crash and Argentina during their two crashes, the bond currency idea, in order for us to possibly maximize industrial power and save ourselves. So that's my message. If we don't fix money, we're dead. So thanks again for this opportunity to spread my message. I really appreciate it. Uh, not many times I thank Rogers, but this time I do. Thank you very much. Thornhill 2014.